It's Sunday night, and it's time for Johnny M's Show! <laughs> Hello everyone across the USA, this is Johnny M, and it's time for another Extremely Entertainment Show. It's Sunday, August 8th, 1993, and there's no other place I'd rather be than talking to you about video games and everything else hot in entertainment. In case this is your first listen in, well, welcome to the show. And also, what took you so long? Just because we're on at 10 p.m. on Sundays doesn't mean you can't stay up and listen in. If you get a chance, call into your local station that you're hearing this on and thank them for broadcasting the most extremely awesome entertainment show in the country. Alrighty then, let's start off with what's hot in the charts. The top five grossing movies as of last night are number one, In the Line of Fire, grossing $3.4 million. Number two, Jurassic Park, grossing $2.8 million. Number three, Cliffhanger, with only a third of a million dollars. Number four, Last Action Hero, only $42,000. And number five, at only $14,000, a cent of a woman. I was surprised to see Jurassic Park got kicked out of number one slot this week with the release of In Line of Fire, but... You know, it had to happen sometime, I guess. Hopefully there's a sequel soon, because I want more. In the world of music, we have the Billboard Top 10 Songs from last week. Number 1, Can't Help Falling in Love for UB40. Number 2, Whoop, There It Is from Tag Team. Number 3, Weak by SWV. Number 4, I'm Gonna Be from The Proclaimers. Number 5, Slam by Onyx. Number 6, that's the Way Love Goes by Janet Jackson. Number seven, Lately by Jodeci. Number eight, Show Me Love by Robin S. Number nine, Knockin' the Boots by H-Town. And number ten, I'll Never Get Over You by Expose. I can listen to I'm Gonna Be from the Proclaimers and whoop, there it is, on repeat for at least a whole day. So I'm glad to see they're hanging in there. When it comes to our favorite medium video games. Blockbuster's top rentals for last month are Kirby's Adventure on NES, X-Men on Genesis, Bubsy on SNES, Tecmo Basketball, not baseball, Basketball on NES, WWF Royal Rumble on SNES, Cool Spot on Genesis, Tiny Toons Adventures 2 on NES, Fatal Fury on SNES, Bulls vs. the Blazers, on Genesis and DuckTales 2 on NES. No surprise to see Kirby at number one, as this game is amazing. It's super fun and looks like an SNES game running on an NES. So now you know what's hot. We are back and it's time for what's in Johnny's head. So this week, I wanna talk about where I see gaming going in the next five to 10 years and what I hope to see. The last five years have seen many changes in video games as a whole. We've seen Sega really stand out from just being an arcade game maker to being a huge threat to Nintendo. Sonic came out only two years ago, and he's everywhere, and I'm still not sick of him. The Turbo 16, which seemed to have so much promise at its release, seems to have sort of just disappeared into the background. And if you are independently wealthy, you can play your own Neo Geo games at home with their extravagantly expensive console. We now have a whole new type of gaming with full gaming handhelds that use their own cartridges, which is amazing to me. Just recently, we started to hear a lot about new players coming to the market, which has me excited. I'm really excited to see what Atari, who has seemed to really sit out the 16-bit wars, is planning on doing with their Jaguar system. I can see them making a comeback. It seems to be the closest thing yet to what we have with cutting-edge PCs. 3D shooting games look amazing, and if they can bring these home with really, really attractive console pricing, I could see them doing very, very well. I think Nintendo and Sega will be releasing new consoles in the next couple years to compete against the onslaught of new, more powerful players. I can see this turning into a three-man race with Atari back in the mix. But maybe with other electronic companies starting to take gaming seriously, 
we may have a ton of new systems for companies we didn't expect. I'm pretty big on Sega, however. With an arsenal of 3D arcade hits to power a new, more powerful machine, I could see them increasing their lead over Nintendo. But the question really is, will their new hardware come soon enough before Atari or someone else takes their crown? I predict a more powerful Game Boy will come out with a color screen and a light to compete against the Game Gear. The system is four years old and it's looking a little pale, or maybe green, in comparison. In the long term, I could see video games taking over the living room and maybe even the office. We could have a video game system play movies and music on CDs. How hard can it be to get that new internet thing on a console? You could send an electronic letter to your friend over a modem that's connected to your console and maybe even play a game with them over your telephone line like you do on expensive computers. I guess my point is, why would you need a computer, a VCR, and a stereo when your game console could be all these things? Don't even get me started on handheld consoles. Could you imagine if your Game Boy could play games, videos, music, get on the internet, maybe even make a phone call? It's going to be an exciting future, that's for sure, and I can't wait. And that is what's in Johnny's head. This is President Bill Clinton, and when I'm not playing the sax, I'm listening to Johnny M's Extremely Entertainment Show. All right, guys, welcome back. Lots to cover this week in quick news, so let me give you the 411. Video games are about to get ratings just like movies. Sega has announced plans to incorporate a rating system for all future releases. Sounds like just in time for the release of Mortal Kombat. Nintendo has announced that their hit games will be getting a price hike of about $10. So games that cost $50 will now cost $60. Not cool, Nintendo. Not cool. Now we have some sad news in the world of music. Randy Hobbs from the Johnny Winter Band has passed away at the age of 45 from heart failure. Now it's time to go over this week's new gaming releases. Street Fighter 2 Turbo has released on the SNES, and it's frickin' awesome. Gameplay is so fast, we now have 12 fighters to choose from, and the graphics look even better. I don't know about you, but I'm about to trade my old copy in. The Genesis will not be left out this month, though, with its release of SNK's arcade hit Fatal Fury. While the graphics are no match for Neo Geo's superior hardware, this port holds its own with the ability to play as the boss characters and its strong gameplay. For Sega CD, we have a new version of Echo the Dolphin with better graphics, better sound, and a new soundtrack makes this the version to buy, assuming you have a Sega CD, that is. For those on the go this week, Sega has released its port of Streets of Rage 2 for the Game Gear. While you have one less playable character and the moves are simplified, this game still looks great. Being able to play this on the go with a minimal trade-off makes this one worth picking up. Game Boy gets a new Spider-Man game this week. Big sprites and good controls make this one of LJN's better releases of the year. The NES is still kicking with a new title this month. Yoshi's Cookie is an addictive puzzle game with one to two player modes. It's apparent that the old original Nintendo still has plenty of life left in it, especially with the new smaller model coming out in October. It looks like that's all for new releases this week. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, guys. And now it's time for the mailbag. So our first question we have this week is from Mark M. in South Dakota. He's asking what my favorite beverage is and what's my favorite, uh, you know, snack. Well, my favorite beverage, I would have to say, is Crystal Pepsi. Now, I know that's a new beverage with not a lot of history, but that soda is amazing. And I hope it's around for a very long time because ever since it came out last year, I've been drinking it like crazy by the liters. I'm going to be putting on some weight. <laughs> All right, and my favorite snack, hmm, I'm not a huge snacker, but I gotta say, M&M's, yeah, nothing beats just snacking on a bag of M&M's, all right, <laughs> hope that answers your question, thanks for listening in. Next message comes from Martha P. from Ohio, she's asking, 
me what my life model is. Well, Johnny M's life model is pretty simple, actually. Treat others the way you want to be treated. So basically, you know, try to do good things for people and hope for the best, but don't expect anything in return. Just be good to everybody. Don't be judgmental. And, you know, stay awesome. We got a letter from Matt in Florida who wants my opinion on violence in video games. Now, I think violent video games really aren't even a problem. I think we're looking for a problem because we don't want to deal with a proper solution. And I think video games just get a... It's an easy target. Let's blame a video game manufacturer for something else. And let's just go after them because they're an easy target. Now, do I think games are becoming too violent? No. I think we're getting to the point where we can express more graphically in video games. But I think that adds to the story. I don't necessarily think it's violence just for violence sake. Now, you could argue that Mortal Kombat is violence for violence sake, but I don't think so. It's there to tell a story as cheesy as it may be, as simple as it might, might be. I think there's a reason for it. So no, I don't think video games are becoming too violent. I think people are becoming too lazy when they want to find a, an excuse for societal's issues. Society's issues. <laughs> Societal issues in society. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Okay, Doug from Oregon asks, Do you think one day video games could be a movie? Could we use an entire video game to tell a story for two hours and essentially have the video game be the movie? Now, I think I kind of get what you're trying to say. Could we have a movie that is just all animated? Graphically, of course, with computers. I think that could easily happen. And I kind of think we have little snippets now. I could see a movie one day having voice actors, but the, everything you see on the screen be a video game. And that would be quite interesting. Now, I think it might be a niche, a niche movie genre. I don't think it's going to be mainstream. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it'll be mainstream. But I could see that happening sooner than later. And finally, Dave Smith from New York, New York, asks me, yours truly, what do I do in my free time? Well, I play a lot of video games. <laughs> Couldn't you tell? I host a video game show, so of course I play a lot of video games. Uh, my favorite system, it's hard to say. I like the Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis. Uh, I know that's kind of passe, because those are the two main systems out right now, but they really are my favorite systems of all time. Uh, as far as television, I watch a lot of Bob Newhart. I uh, really like MASH, and also, I have to say, I really, as far as new shows go, I really watch a lot of In Living Color and The Simpsons. And that's all we have for the mailbag this week, and please keep sending your messages in. I love reading them. They're really insightful, thought-provoking, and I just, I just love having this, this interaction with our listeners. We have some pretty exciting news this week in the rumor mill, but you didn't hear it from me. So it looks like Sega might be working on two new systems. Not just the one new 3264-bit system, but maybe another system to go along with that. I don't know how that's going to work, but hey, <laughs> I'll be interest, interested to find out. Also, it looks like Nintendo has already started working on their new system. Rumor has it that they've been shopping around ideas from other manufacturers What's that mean? I don't know, but I think it has something to do with computer manufacturers for their 3D technology, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. And that's all we have for the rumor mill this week. Stay tuned. We are almost out of time this week, but before I sign off, let's go over what's coming up soon in the world of gaming. Mortal Kombat will be coming to home consoles in September. I'm personally excited to be able to play it at home finally. That will certainly save a lot of quarters, but this game is most likely going to set you back 60 bucks. Perhaps spending my quarters isn't such a bad thing. The next generation of gaming is starting to heat up. The 3DO console will be releasing before the year's end, and it will be a powerhouse. 
I've seen a preview reel at CES this year, and I have to say that Road Rash has never looked so good. With 32-bit processing and CD audio, this system may give Sega and Nintendo a serious run for the money. I would be very nervous if I were them. And as mentioned earlier in the show, Atari has announced that they have full attentions on releasing their 64-bit, that's right, 64-bit system this fall. So between the Neo Geo and Atari, wow, it's going to be an exciting fall. Well, that's all the time we have tonight. This is Johnny M, and I'll be here again next week with all the hottest info you need to know.